Good morning all, I hope you are well. So I have two pairs on watch today. Those are Kiwi Dollar and Kiwi Cad. Just to say that I placed a trade yesterday on Euro Dollar, and I'm going to break that down for you in a minute, in a second rather. That was my first trade in I think five weeks. My entries just haven't shaped up, and that's one of the things about trading is that you have to be patient. You never know how many trades are going to come along at any one time. Sometimes there can be none for a considerable period of time sometimes there can be loads and they come along like buses that's often what i found to be the case but anyway without further ado let's break this euro euro dollar trade for you uh, down for you now so on the higher time frames the narrative as i see it is that we had this last exchange of liquidity here which price tapped into we know that typically on the higher time frames we break below before moving to the upside and you can see if I just remove those squiggles that we did break just below. And we also had this kind of one, two, three touch structure. Okay. So that we see these all the time. We had this structure here with the middle section, the one, two, three wave middle section here. Okay. We tap into it and push to the upside. We then had, so there's no need at this moment in time for us to come all the way back down to here because we've already washed out that liquidity. Okay, we then have this three touch reversal structure, which taps into this area of consolidation where there was a big sell off last time of last time around, bearing in mind that this is the weekly chart. Okay, we have the second touch that breaks above the first near misses to this area. The third touch breaks above, catches people the wrong side of the market and then rallies to the downside aggressively. We then tap into the base of all of this so this low here so we come down we near miss to this low this low near misses to this low which near misses to this low so it's likely that we'll take all of these out break just below which we did and then rally to the upside okay so there's no need for us to come all the way down to here at the moment because this is a completed piece of structure and potentially on in to on the higher degree we could be seeing this kind of impulse correction continuation to take out this near miss which near missed to this high here, but that's super long-term forecasting. But just trying to build the picture so that we're trading in alignment with the money flow and not in alignment with you know the opposite direction to them. Don't don't try and swim against the tide, swim with it. Okay. So we have this area of consolidation here. You can almost see the three drives. One, two, three. Third drive breaks above. We sell, sell off to the downside. Then we come up. We have a near miss to this area. We then tap above it and then move aggressively to the downside. And then crucially, we have consolidation below this low, giving me a clue that this is an impulse correction continuation, which will likely push lower. Notice here, we tap the low. What didn't we do? We didn't break below it. And on the higher time frames, typically we break below if we're going to rally to the upside. So it's no surprise to me that we tap wicked to the area and moved up correctively because this was likely a trap to trap people into the buys before we wash all these people out that tried to buy there, break below bargain area of value for the bigger players. And then we move aggressively from there. I am mindful of the fact that there is a, a bit of a near miss. So this low and in particular, this one now near miss to this low. Okay. So that is a factor in my thinking, but you can see or was a factor in my thinking yesterday when I placed this trade but if, if I just drill down you can see that we were in a run of momentum so from this area we had moved up you know a significant we'd moved up and we'd broken above these highs giving me a clue that this was a potential impulse whoops wrong tool let's try that again this was a potential impulse correction continuation <clears throat> to take out all of these highs especially this one which near missed to here and potentially because this formed above this consolidation here uh, and not below it potentially take out this high which the this high near missed to and potentially even take out this high because this high formed above all of this but certainly here would be a solid target so i was looking so then i was trying to separate the structures on the lower time frames the previous daily close where were we? So this, we had this, um, where was this 28th? Yeah, we had this bearish candle here, this rejection candle. 
Okay. And I was mindful of the fact that it was a bearish high test that had wicked to this area, which you'll see more clearly as I drill down. But that doesn't mean that it, it's still a high test candle. Okay. It's just a slightly bearish one. That's it would have been better if it was bullish. But as I said, trading is not about perfection. Okay. It, you, you rarely, I, I don't remember seeing a perfect trade, if you want to use that word in inverted commas. Uh, but we had this. So we had this impulse correction continuation that we have a bit of a slightly strange pullback, which pulls back um, a bit more than I would have liked. But generally speaking, this is a fairly decent sequence. It's not the best, but it's a, a decent sequence of um, corrections on the way up. Now, what I was doing here, so I was looking at this structure. So we had, and I was separating the structures, impulse correction continuation. We then wick below wash all of these people out that bought there, tap into some of this, push up. We then have this three-touch structure. We push up. Price leaves a footprint. We come down. We near miss to the footprint, push up. People get trapped into the buy. We come down, take out this consolidation wick just below it, push up. There was a little area of consolidation here, which I was seeing as the area of value because this was a completed piece of structure. We had this little area of consolidation, which we moved out of quite aggressively. And you may be able to see this. Yeah. Whoops. Let's try that again. So if we just drill down, you can see that there's an area of consolidation here, which actually happens to be a three touch structure. Okay. Which, it, which was the causation of this aggressive move to the down to the upside. Rather, we then come down, we near miss to that area, giving me that this, giving me a clue that this is the FOMO leg and that price will likely come back down and tap into the area of value, which it near missed to. It does. It breaks just below and then rallies to the upside aggressively. It's no surprise to me because we rallied quite aggressively here. So it's no surprise to me that we rallied aggressively here. Okay. And then what I was doing is I was looking at the, let's just take that off a minute. Okay. So we had a, if we just zoom out to the four hour, you can see we had a very strong four hour from that low. Okay. And we'd completely retraced the entirety of it. And you can see that we were consolidating on the four hour chart, right? We then had this. So price had consolidated. This was a one hour correction. This is very deliberate. This is weighted. I wasn't necessarily waiting for weight, weighted price action, but we corrected through the Asian session after a solid impulse up, giving me a clue that this was an impulse correction continuation to push higher. And, and as I said yesterday, if the market, the little questions which I asked myself on the chart, will just load them up. Where have they gone? There they go. There they are. Positioning. Am I well positioned here if I get long with, within or on the break of this flag for a move to the upside? Yes. Tick. Is the sequence okay? It's not the best I've ever seen, the sequence on the way up, but it is a decent sequence so that we'll give that one a silver tick not across. If the market was to take me out, what would it look like? Well, it would look like something like this, tag in, tag out, and then that. Okay, that is not typical price action. You can see that's actually what happened, but that is not typical price action. So non-typical means it doesn't happen the majority of the time. Um, as traders, we're trading on the side of probabilities. You might think, well, how comes it happened then? You just said it's not typical. Probabilistic thinking. If something is typical, it usually happens, okay? If something's not typical, it doesn't usually happen. This doesn't usually happen. Therefore, this is unusual unusual price action. Unusual does not mean that something doesn't ever happen, okay? Nothing happens all of the time and nothing happens none of the time. So because this is unusual, this makes this a lower risk position for me to take which is why I took the trade. Okay. It's very important to think in terms of probabilities. And I think that's one of the hardest things for, for people to do. We're, we're, we're told if you look at politicians, they use the word uncertainty a lot. Why do they do that? They want you to vote a certain way because they know that people fear uncertainty. So people try, because people try to create certainty in their life in trading, you have to be comfortable with uncertainty, which is a very difficult thing to do. And a, a thing that I found very difficult to do. OK, but you have to do it. Otherwise, you're not thinking probabilistically. And one thing I know is that when I take a loss, people on YouTube and on TradingView unfollow and unsubscribe to, unsubscribe to me. Why did they do that? 
they likely do that because they believe that there's no that if a trade if a strategy produces a loss then it doesn't work well i already know that they're not thinking probabilistically and as i always say if there's a a uh, trading strategy that never produces a loss. I'm sure Warren Buffett would like to hear from you because I'm sure he's been looking for one of those his whole life. Okay. So this was the trade I, the forecast. You can see the forecast there. So I got long. I've just locked this at the exact prices. I got long. I'm seeing this as consolidation impulse correction, continuation to push higher. I was tagged in there. Uh, price came down here. Okay. And so many times in the past, I've moved to break even too quickly. Like, so after the close of this, I used to do that in the past. Price would come down, tag me out, and then move in the forecasted direction. I'm sure you've all experienced that. So I was just seeing this. I was giving this room, seeing this even when we pull back as a retest to go long, because that's what happens the majority of the time, according to my documentation. However, it didn't happen. It just dropped out, wicked me out there. CPI came in it moved up and then this when i saw this i knew that this was just going to get messy because we had a sharp move up sharp move down sharp move up it would likely carry on in that fashion and this would just become um this, this is just erratic price action so tagged in there i believe i was tagged out here if i hadn't been tagged out there um so that was where was it i was tagged out just before cpi Okay, so if I hadn't been tagged out just before CPI news data had been released, I would have closed this manually rather than sitting through CPI because it's just not worth the risk, as you can see from this erratic price action here. Okay, so that is euro dollar. That was a loss. Um, I'm very happy with that because I stuck to, I did everything that I said I was going to do, and it was a low risk position. If I take this 100 times, I know that it will make me money, okay, from experience. But anyway, let's break down the pairs that I haven't watched today because I've gone on a little bit longer than I would have liked. So uh, Kiwi dollar, right? We have Kiwi dollar. We do have some near misses up here. However, you can see that we have retraced. We have retraced well over 50%. We're down here now. So we've re retraced well over 50% of this move from here to here. So I'm not worried about this uh, near miss here to here. Because we're like, <clears throat> excuse me, we're likely, uh, we're, we're likely moving to the downside potentially to come down here. I don't think so, given where the DXY is positioned, but potentially we we could be looking for shorts rather than worrying about this near miss up here. So if that's the case, what is the narrative as I see it? So we have the near miss down there. Although I don't think we'll get there, it is a positive. Okay, we have tapped above. Yeah, this high, we have a bit of a near miss there. That's a slight negative, but we have that high there. We tap into that and, and that one there. We move to the downside and then we start to get some structure. Okay, so we have this structure here, completed piece of structure, break above, push to the downside. We have this consolidation here. We break above that, okay, move to the downside and then we correct, more importantly, underneath that giving me a clue that this is an impulse this is an impulse correction continuation to push lower okay if we just look at what happened afterwards price leaves a footprint we come down we come up we near miss to that we move to the downside come uh, come back up we then have this kind of reversal structure which, which taps into the footprint okay so this breaks above these highs but doesn't tap into here this breaks above all of them and taps, in, taps into the footprint by way of a reversal structure. And you can see that we've well and truly dropped out. So I'm just seeing this as a move, potentially an, an impulse an impulse correction continuation to take us down to this low, which this low near miss too. And then potentially, given where the DXY is positioned, we may break below, push back up to take out this high which this high near miss too and then we would have this structure okay and then this would be the middle section and then this would be an impulse correction continuation that would make sense given how the dxy is positioned in my opinion and experience so can we capitalize on a move to the downside okay well the answer is yes so we have a little footprint there okay i'm just speeding up ever so slightly because I've rambled on a bit too much. So I've got my area of value there. There's an important key detail here, which I want to touch on, is that we have a completed piece of structure here, which didn't commit. So we have a one, two, three, okay, with the middle section. 
which which didn't commit. Okay, when that happens and you come back up, which would kind of be a fourth touch after you've already. So we came down. This is the key bit and hit the base, the ninety percent rule of this structure. So when that happens and then we push up to an area of value, I don't take risk entries from the the top because when we have a completed piece of structure like that and we hit the base of it this could be forming something else and we could end up breaking out moving to the upside making a risk entry from this area of value more risky okay as opposed to if this wasn't a completed piece of structure and we hadn't moved down and hit the base of it okay so what i'll be doing in this instance is i'll be waiting for price to tap into this area and then rather than trying to call the top, I will wait for a little push down, followed by either a five minute or a 15 minute continuation. So uh, six to eight corrective five minute candles or 15 minute candles. And then, as you can see there, if it was a five minute continuation, I'd take a reduced risk entry on the break of it. And then I'll be able to manage this down to the low. And as a first target, we would have that. This was just just be a short term move because this is a sharp move. I would actually cut profit there. I would set a take profit there whilst trailing my stops. So just a short term move because we could pull back deeply from that area. OK, so that's how I would do this. That would be just a little short term play. That's what I'm going to be looking for. Entry requirements there. Alert set. Let's move on to the last pair. So that is a lower risk position. OK, so if it was to take me out after doing all of this, that would be very deliberate. And if it was to take me out after all the other confluence factors, that would be unusual price action. So by the fact that it would be unusual price action to tag me in, tag me out and then blast to the upside, this would be a low risk position. However, Kiwi CAD moving on to the last one. OK, so this would definitely be a higher risk position, in my opinion, and experience. So I will not be taking this. We're in a new month until I'm in profit by 2% for the month. I will not be taking a higher risk position. So that that by definition would require Kiwi dollar to put me in profit by 2% for the month before I was able to place a trade on this pair, if that makes sense. So it's important to have a plan. So just going through this quickly, we have the move down. We have this structure here. We have this, the base of this structure here. We tap into that here and we move up aggressively which is no surprise to me because volume was built there okay we then tap whoops we then tap into this high here we move down we move down correctively we we scoop back up we have a near miss to high that is one of the reasons this makes this uh, higher risk however i do like um, the key one is this one here is that we have a near miss to here as well uh, and a near miss to here and another one but we are trading below here, this low, this high here. OK, so what I'm looking for in this instance, I won't be wait. I will be taking a risk entry from here. If it was to shape up and I was in profit by 2% for the month. However, if this was to tag me in and tag me out. That wouldn't be unusual price action because that we would then have this structure. OK, that would not look unusual. OK, Th this kind of one two, three, which taps into there. So because it wouldn't look unusual, that would be a higher risk position, in my opinion. So what I'll be looking for, assuming, there we go, assuming that I would actually be in profit um, by 2%, which would, re would require the other entry to shape up and put me in profit. In this instance, because we don't have a completed piece of structure, and this actually just looks like the middle section to push back up so an impulse correction continuation i will be taking a risk entry from the top here all, all other things considered and then i'll be able to manage it down to this low for the uh, as a first target assuming we did actually push down from there one of the reasons that this is slightly higher risk as well if you just look at the sequence that's not typical uh, to start a move to the downside and then we, we could be move, playing a move all the way down to these areas here okay and for so, and I would use the management tool, so I would cut the this at the ninety percent um, area as well. So although the profit potential is bigger on this one, potentially, according to what I've drawn on, um, it's it's not about profit; it's about the risk parameters, and this would be a higher risk position. Anyway, hope I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've understood the thought process, and I hope it has provided you with with provided you with some value. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I will see you again in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.